Problem four, using deductive reasoning and counterexamples. Is the statement true or false? If it is false, give a counterexample. A says, for all real numbers, A and B, A times B equals B plus A. Now right away, intuitively, we know this is false. But in order to demonstrate that it's false, we need to provide one counterexample. And that's a good thing to keep in mind. It doesn't take more than one. If I make a statement like, all dogs in this town are black. Well, we only need to provide one non-black dog, maybe a white dog, to demonstrate that that statement was false. So we'll do something similar with equations like this. A times B equals B plus A. So what we should think about is some number A and a number B that prove this is false. Let's just choose two and three. So we'll let A equal two and B equal three. Thinking about this, two times three is six, two plus three is five. So this is a good counterexample for us. Now plugging it in, we'll see that A times B equals two times three and that that does not equal B plus A so three plus two, B plus A. So there we found a counterexample. So we can say the statement is false, and a counterexample is A equals two, and B equals three. B says, for all real numbers A, B, and C, A plus B plus C equals B plus A plus C. Sometimes we'll refer to those values in parentheses as the quantity. So I might read that first expression on the left of the equal sign as the quantity A plus B plus C. And then to continue equals B plus the quantity A plus C. So let's test this. So we're thinking of values A, B, and C. So some real numbers, um, maybe one, two, and three. So if we define A to equal one, B, to equal two, and c to equal three. Now let's see if this turns out to be true or false. So a plus b is going to be one plus two, plus c will be plus three. So we're really questioning, will this equal b plus, so two plus the quantity a plus c, one plus three. Well, simplifying, I'll switch colors here. One plus two is, of course, three, and we'll follow the, the order of operations, PEMDAS, and complete the work in parentheses first as we simplify. Plus three, again, we're questioning, will that equal two plus the quantity, one plus three is four, continuing downward, three plus three, six equals and sure enough, in this case, it is true. Six equals six, so in the case of a equals one, b equals two, and c equals three, this is true. What we now need to consider is, for all real numbers, will this be true? Or do we just happen to choose the correct values for a, b, and c that make it true? Maybe for some values it is true, for some values it's not. Um, we have a couple of options. Uh, one is to continue plugging in values, trying to prove this false by finding a counterexample. But probably more efficiently is consider what properties we might be able to use to prove this is true because we have a lot of properties of math that we can use. Uh, for, for instance, the commutative properties of uh, addition and multiplication, the distributive property of multiplication over addition or subtraction, and the associative properties of addition and multiplication, um, just to name three. So let's see if we can use one of those properties to demonstrate or justify that this statement may be true. We have a couple of things different between the left-hand side or the expression on the left-hand side and the expression on the right-hand side of the equation. First thing to notice is I see A, B, and C in that order. So uh, disregarding parentheses for the moment, A, B, C. Now on the right-hand side in that expression I see B, A, C. So we have a, a change of order. Now remember, a plus b will equal 
b plus a, uh, just like 3 plus 2 equals 2 plus 3. And that's an example of the commutative property of addition, which also, by the way, holds true for multiplication. Um, but that's not the only change we see. We see a change in order, but notice also the parentheses have, have changed. They're grouping different variables on the right-hand side. So rather than grouping a and b, they're grouping a and c. So a change in grouping can also be thought of as a change in association. So on the left-hand side, we have a plus b associated with one another. On the right-hand side, it's a and c, so a plus c in parentheses. So it looks like we have two properties at work here. First, the commutative property of addition that allows us to reorder the variables. And second, the associative property of addition, which allows us to group uh, addition or variables, um, group terms differently in addition problems and still get the same answer as long as it's strictly addition. And here's your chance to show that you have got it. A uh, reasoning question. Is each statement in parts A and B true or false? If it is false, give a counterexample. If true, use properties of real numbers to show the expressions are equivalent. First, part A. For all real numbers j and k, j times k equals the quantity k plus 0 times j. And part B. For all real numbers m and n, m times the quantity n plus 1 equals m times n plus 1. Finally, part C. Is the statement in part A of problem 4 false for every pair of real numbers A and B? Explain. Uh, 